Hello and welcome to another episode of the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wood and I'll be your host, joined by my co-host Donna Dunyan. Good evening everyone. And for those who don't know, Donna uh, Donna is the director of Veterans, Veterans Strong, Strong Community, Community Center. Center. I told you it's gonna be a rough day today. Yep. Um, so, you know, and, and we got a special guest. Uh, a lot of times we have returned guests. We, we have our uh, first time guest here today. Uh, gonna be a great show. Another show that we're trying to focus on is animal therapy, I guess you'd yep. call it, right? Mm -hmm. um, so we, we, a lot of times we have the horses, we've had dogs recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we have another one, um, always a great show. We love having dogs on. And if you notice, we're on a separate, uh, actually a completely different for different us set. Uh, set. So mm -hmm. this way you're able to see uh, Opie. <laughs> we'll, we'll introduce him first. Uh, we have with us Craig Bergeron. Uh, Craig is the founder of uh, New England U U Human Animal Bond Foundation. Uh, and, you know, we, we, we got in touch with you not too long ago. Yep. Uh, for those that are new to this show, what we try to do is we try to bring any organization, foundation, individuals that provide a service for the veteran community. And uh, we've been doing this since 2013. Yep. This right here is our 286th uh, episode. You're going to count them down every time. I, I, I am until <laughs> yeah. we get to the 300. So uh, without further ado, let's uh, let's jump into this. Craig, it, it's a pleasure. Uh, it's great to have you. Yeah, thanks for having me. Uh, uh, and, and obviously. And Opie. And Opie. And Opie. Opie. Um, yes, I see. So. Well, Craig, let's, we'll get the ball rolling. Can um, you give everyone an overview of your background? and tell us a little bit about your therapy dog, dog here, Opie. Sure, uh, my name is Craig Bergeron, um, born and raised in Connecticut, <laughs> um, live in Columbia, Connecticut right now, and that's where our organization is based out of. Um, my background is I am a dog trainer and specializing in therapy dogs. Uh, this is my dog, Opie. Um, he's a five-year-old Rottweiler, and okay. he has been a therapy dog since he was one years old. That's when we certified. He's distracted by my <laughs> cup of water over here on the side. <clears throat> yeah, so uh, I guess, uh, how? tell us about the organization. Okay. Uh, you said you're located in Columbia. Uh, how and when did you start and, and why did you start? Sure. Um, so we started in 2019. Our um, organization is New England Human Animal Bond Foundation. Um, we started out with getting puppies. My co-founder, um, friend, uh, Michelle, she has Opie's sister. And we just saw these pups and they just were so social and they just loved everybody. And we said, we have to share them. Um, so we went and certified with a, another organization, and they became therapy dogs. Same time, we were also into horses. Um, I had my own horse. Um, my co-founder, Michelle, had uh, three horses of her own at the time. So we said, we have a perfect setup for helping others, yep. and that's what we wanted to do. We really wanted to get out there. Um, and just share what we had with the horses and the dogs. Um, so we started out in 2019. Um, we got our certifications for dog therapy, and then we also got certifications for equine therapy, unmounted, um, which means we don't do any riding programs. Yeah. Um, it's all on the ground. COVID hit and <laughs> slowed everything down yeah. for us. So. It gave us some time to put everything together, put our programs together and who we wanted to serve. Um, veterans were a major part of that discussion. Yeah. Um, I have family members who were served, you know, who have served and who are currently serving. Um, same thing with my co-founder, Michelle. Um, and we decided, let's give back. Let's see what we can do um, in get these guys out there and doing some work for uh, others. He's yeah. just chilling. I love it. <laughs> yeah, he's, he's, he's just relaxing. Guy. One other time we had a show up here 
because of it was a service dog. <clears throat> that was a great thing. Uh, oh, that, didn't, that, you had three dogs that night, though. No, no, no. Th oh. This goes. This was last year. Oh, okay. Right. Last year we had a Great Dane here, and the chairs were pushed all the way back to the wall, <laughs> uh, and and that dog took up the whole the whole, the whole, the whole spot. Thing. Uh, I, I tell you, it's all the shows that we do. Mm -hmm. uh, it's therapy for us to you know occasionally have. I mean, the last time uh, we had, we had four dogs here. Yeah, that was the uh, one two, I, two I bowed ago. out because of my allergies. Yeah. So. Um, but be, so besides veterans, are there what other groups do you focus on your service on, and I guess what who can participate? Sure. In the so, programs. Um, our programs are quite varied. Um, we offer the horses um, to assisted living facilities, okay. um, memory care facilities. Uh, they will actually bring a bus out to our farm, and. Either some that are able to come off the bus will go and visit the horses. Others will just stay and watch um, through the windows. Um, our programs are offered to um, veterans, first responders, and their families. Okay. Um, we run a kids camp in the summertime. Um, it's a week-long camp. Kids come out, interact with the horses. We bring the dogs out sometimes. Um, but it's a it's a great thing. Um, it really gets you know people off of their day to day routines, mm -hmm. and it's a good way to just relax, um, come out. The, the programs are not really um, scripted at all, so we can gear it towards how people are feeling that day. If they want to come out and just pet the horses, mm -hmm. or they want to um, take them for a walk on our little nature trail, they can do that. Um, or they can get in there and get their hands dirty and pick up a pitchfork, and we're always, you know, willing to have that happen. There, there's always that need. <laughs> yeah. Dogs, yeah. horses, there's always a need to pick up after them. Sure. You know, uh, you, you were talking about uh, assisted living uh, facilities. Now, I mean, I've, I've seen videos uh, where they actually bring the dogs there, oh, yeah. and I've actually yeah. seen... Uh, there must be one heck of a liability, but bringing the horses in. Uh, have you seen that? Um, not full-size horses, but yeah, mini-sized. Yeah, yeah, small yeah, ones. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, wa walking through the hallways. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Uh, that's got to be slippery. I mean. You would think. Yeah. Right. Maybe some boots or something. So, so part of our program, too, is, um, or our organization, is that we train others to um, become a therapy dog handler team. Yeah. So... If someone has a dog they think would excel at therapy, they come and we teach the course. Now, our course is different because we teach it right in facility at an assisted living facility, yeah. um, which also has a memory care unit. Um, so you're getting hands-on, you know, hands-on teaching and, and practice there with the dog um, yeah. before you go out into the real world with your, with your dog. Um, and the residents absolutely love it. You know, they wait for it. We there, we're there every Tuesday night, and um, we have a good, solid group of residents that wait for us, and they, you know, stay, and they want to meet all the dogs and all the new dogs yeah. that come into our program. I don't, I don't know too many uh, canine programs or equine. And, <clears throat> I mean, just something about when you bring an animal in. Uh, I mean, it's you can see why... They're very successful mm -hmm. in, in the therapy program for PTSD or, or, or just, I mean, it could be depression or something. Oh, cool. It just perks people up. Mm -hmm. I took, when I came in and we first came into the lobby of the building, he, Opie was laying on the floor, but he sat up and he put his paw on the chair for me to sit down <laughs> next to him because he knew I had a rough day at work. <laughs> they sense that. He's quite yeah. intuitive. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, he really is. <clears throat> Uh, do you have, um, are your classes structured or do you have times during the week, I guess is what I want to ask, times during the week where you have set classes or can people just drop in? It is a set class. Okay. So we don't accept everybody. Okay. Um, we do a pre-evaluation um, of the dog before they even join our classes. We just don't want to waste anybody's time yep. and money. 
Um, so we will do an evaluation of the dog and make sure that it's suited for therapy. Um, and then once they've passed that, we go into a, basically a 10 week program okay. um, before they can test and are certified as a therapy dog. And even for the farm, the classes at the farm, so the, how does that work? The classes at the farm, um, on Mondays we have our veterans class, okay. or our, our veterans day um, program. So that usually runs in the afternoon um, for a couple hours. Um, one of the things that we struggle with is getting veterans to come out to the program and, and show up at the farm. Um, there's a lot of interest. We've hit the ground with going to veteran centers um, in the coffee houses, and we've put our, our name and our, you know, what we do out there. Mm -hmm. um, and there is a lot of interest in it, um, but logistics sometimes get in the mm -hmm. way of how um, they can come and, and utilize our, our facility. Um, so we'd really, you know, welcome anyone to, you know, to offer services or something to come out and, you know, maybe a ride share program or something like that that can get people to come out if there is a, that need. Um, Transportation. I, I'm like, we'll, we'll talk later. I've got some contacts on yeah, that sure. side of the state <laughs> that might be able to help you with that. But, but I know that that is a big problem is the transportation mm. to, to yes. get them where, and that's, that's pandemic across whatever the veterans need. If they don't live in a community that has public transportation, I feel like it's harder and harder for them to get to the programs yeah. that they need. So, no, Espe we'll, especially we'll out in, in your area where it's more rural. Mm -hmm. Yes, uh, for sure. I mean, there's challenges around here. Yeah. Where where it's not so rural. Uh, well, yeah, because there's no public transportation yeah. through some of the towns. I mean, you only got a couple of organizations, a mm -hmm. DAV, or but that's primarily to medical appointments. To, to VA. Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah. Um, you had talked about one of the struggles. We just talked about it. Yeah. What are so, what are some of the other struggles that that you're running into? Um, uh, the one I think everybody kind of struggles with fundraising. Yes. Oh, yeah. As a um, as a nonprofit, um, you know we we're kind of a grassroots organization right now. Um, we have some donations and donors. Um, but we have four horses right now, and um, I don't even know how many therapy dogs. I was dogs almost going to say, <laughs> I was almost I gonna say five. Yeah, so, um, yeah, between me and my partner, we have like four therapy dogs. So, um, you know, so horses are not inexpensive. Yeah. Um, they require a lot, and it's just getting our name out there and what we do and hopefully promoting um, people to take an involve, you know, take involvement in what we do and, and feel so inclined to, you know, offer services or, or help there. Yeah. Um, but we've been pretty much doing it on our own. Um, but in order to keep the programs running and offer more programs, um, you know, we do need some some help there, yeah. like any organization would. Yeah. Well, that's hopefully that. I mean, that's what that's, this show is all yeah. about. Yeah. That's our uh, from whole purpose. Since, since day one, uh, I mean, we're we're here to get the word out for you. You can take these shows and actually put them on from YouTube mm -hmm. on, onto your websites, which leads me up to: Would you like to give the viewers the website? Sure. Um, our website is um, New England Human Animal Bond. Foundation. Um, it's nehabct.org, N-E-H-A-B-C-T.org. Yeah. And you can go there and find out more information about us, um, see all the things we do, and and keep up to date with uh, with all the <laughs> things that are that are going on with us. You can also be found on Facebook. Yes, uh, New England Human Animal Bond Foundation on mm -hmm. Facebook. And if you want to follow this guy, um, he's got his own Instagram page at opie.flyingroddy. And he, you'll follow all his, uh, his adventures doing therapy visits. And um, he is also a nationally recognized um, dock diving dog. 
Um, a duck diving dog. Okay, now, we, <laughs> now that opened up a whole other line of questions. It's a whole sure. other show. <laughs> <laughs> I've seen some of the Instagram reels about that. So yep. he's nationally recognized. So like, they actually have contests or yes. competitions yep. for this. Yeah, yeah. Okay. It's a, it's a uh, nationally, um, actually internationally, because we deal with uh, Canada and stuff so, has yeah. leagues too. So. Um, we jump, and he is the fourth-ranked Roddy in the country right now. Good job, Opie. <laughs> he's, he doesn't care. No. Nope. He's, and he's, when you see him like in. this, um, and then when you see him at dock diving, you're like, is that the same is dog? That, like, is, he's are so you sure? chill <laughs> and mellow. I can't picture him, like, flying into, a, into lakes, I presume. It's, a, it's actually a setup. A uh, pool. A pool. Oh, mm -hmm. okay. So we have like a 40-foot dock and then a 40-foot pool. Okay. Mm -hmm. I probably have seen your Instagram reels and not known <laughs> it was you. Now I'll have to go and follow you. He's, he's just chill. <laughs> he's just chill. What are some of the goals that you have for the organization in the coming year? Yeah, so we have, um, <laughs> we have two programs that are set up specifically for veterans. We have Operation Heroes Haven, which is our equine program. Okay. Um, that is in place and running now, and that's open to all veterans, families, and their fir and first responders. Um, and that program runs on Mondays. Um, Operation Heroes Armor is our dog um, portion, and what we do there is. Um, offer services to veterans that might already have a service dog mm -hmm. where we can um, assist them with any training that they might need okay. or if it's someone that is looking for um, a, ther a ther or service dog I should say um, we can provide training and help them find a dog if oh, they don't okay. already have one okay um, what types of dogs are your therapy dogs are they all rotty no okay so Opie's sister is a therapy dog. Um, she's a Rottweiler, obviously. Yes. But we also have um, a Border Collie, and we have a Border Collie Jack Russell mix. Oh, my gosh. It's going to be hyper. And then <laughs> through our program that people have taken, we have a wide variety of dogs yeah. that are part of our, our team now, um, from doodles to golden retrievers, um, mixes, um, all different types, German Shepherds, Malinois. Yeah. Um, so there's quite a variety and there, you never know which dog is going to excel at it and which ones aren't. Um, it's really up to the temperament of the dog. Okay. So some breeds that you'd say, oh, a golden retriever, that's going to be our typical therapy dog. Mm -hmm. Um, Yes, they excel at it, but so do Rottweilers and so do, you know, any types of breeds. So we don't um, discount any dogs that might want to like, do this. Because like, yeah. uh, I was going to ask too, is there, is there a particular breed that, was that, my you, that you think is best suited for this? But you just said it's, it's based on it's the dog. It's open to all, all breeds, um, but there are some that typically kind of run up at the top for therapy dogs, mm -hmm. your Goldens, um, your Doodles, Labs. Um, those are typically the ones that we see the most often and that excel at this. Well, maybe I'll call you about Tucker. <laughs> He's a Bernadoodle. Sure, we've so. had those too. Yeah. <laughs> now, uh, I just want to lay down with him. <laughs> yeah, it's pretty relaxed. It's relaxing He's just sitting so there. Relax <laughs> yeah, I could just watch him. And that's what makes him like the perfect therapy dog. Um, we do a weekly hospital visit and we visit with all age groups. Yeah. And if there's, you know, excited kids or whatever, he kind of just brings the whole level down yeah. and they kind of match his level and they calm right down. So he's really, really uh, beneficial um, for a lot of people. And, you know, somebody that might be having a bad day comes up and they're sitting on the floor with him. He plops his head right in their lap mm. and he just really is, <coughs> he's really uh, intuitive and a, and a calming force. You know, you, you, you sit there, we're, we're, we've got a Rottweiler. Yeah. Um, I mean, you've got breeds that unfortunately have, have a bad rap. Yeah. And you wouldn't think 
than a Rottweiler because everything you hear, uh, you know, the perfect guard dog and, you know, <laughs> always showing teeth. Mm -hmm. I mean, look at this. It's the same thing with pit bulls. Mm -hmm. I mean, people don't realize that pit bulls, I mean, they, they, they were pretty much bred to babysit, weren't they? Uh, I mean, watch, watch over kids. Uh, they, they have that reputation, I've heard. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, I mean, I mean, they're, they're, I mean, they're, they're gentle dogs. There's uh, no bad dogs. There's bad owners. No. Yeah, exactly. So exactly. there's a, a program um, that the AKC does every year, um, and it's called the Ace Award, and it's an award that's given out to um, the dogs that are in working um, industries. So yep. we have like service dogs, we have canine, police, military, and then we have therapy dog. They get an Ace Award. The Rottweiler is the only breed that has actually won the Ace Award for therapy um, more than one time. All right. So it just goes to show that they're a type of dog that people have a stigma about. Yeah. And when we first got into it, we were like, these dogs are great. Let's change some hearts and change yeah. some minds about them. And, you know, they couldn't be better ambassadors for their breed. Well, yeah. At first, when Kat texted us and let us know that you were you were bringing a Rottweiler. I was like, okay. <laughs> but then, you know, my brother had a Rottweiler as a rescue. My brother's a veteran. <clears throat> that dog was the, the best thing for my brother. And it wasn't, he wasn't trained to be a service dog or anything. Just mm -hmm. that companionship yeah, yeah. was the best thing my brother ever had in his life. And unfortunately, he's gone across the Rainbow Bridge, but my brother talks very fondly about about him <coughs> this this cough has been going on for a while it, it's the the cold is gone but the <clears throat> you guys are worried about me let, let, let's see if I can get through this question with without without coughing um, I guess I'm not gonna be able to <coughs> excuse me to the viewers uh, one, the, one of the questions actually one of the last questions is is there anything else you want to tell the viewers about Opie is there any of the stories or Sure. Oh, yeah. um, Opie is, he's quite the dog and he has quite the story. And a lot of times um, we'll be out and about and it's always like, oh, hey, there's Opie, you know, and I'm like, yeah. how do you know Opie, you know? But he's famous. He, um, with all the places we've gone and the things he's done um, with the therapy work, um, some of the things that are in the background that we don't really put out there and don't really mention probably should but Opie's sister has an autoimmune disease and her body will start destroying her red blood cells so she's had two episodes of this that have popped up over the years and these guys are about to be six um, next month and this last episode was last year and she was in the hospital for a few weeks and her blood level got really, really low. Um, Opie was the only one that could match her blood type and he donated two units of blood to her and pretty much saved her life. Um, the vet went through about 30 different donations um, of blood and nothing matched. And so last ditch effort, we uh, brought him down and, and he was a perfect match. So of all the things that Opie does with his dock diving, he's out there, you know, um, doing the therapy work and everything. He's really, uh, he's really quite the dog. And I think he's a once in a lifetime. Good dog. to have life saving for yeah. sure. Yeah. Opie, you saved your sister's life. <coughs> he's like, yeah, just a normal day. <laughs> and if you have us back, we'll have to bring her down as well. So she's on the mend. Um, she's pretty much made a full recovery and, um, is back to doing therapy visits. Uh, we'll have to, uh, we'll have to spread the chairs out or find one <laughs> of the other sets yeah. here in the studio. Yeah. Well, I, I know I'm going to follow you guys on Instagram because sure. that's what we do at night. My daughter and I share Instagram stories back and forth, especially with dogs. <coughs> so we'll, we'll make sure right. we follow Opie now. As Donna and I know, I mean, these shows go by fast, uh, yeah. before you know it. Uh, and, and here we are, we're less than a minute left. So, Anything else that you that did we forget? Uh, and if we did, we can 
have you back and talk about it again. Sure. Yeah. And everything will go on our Facebook page. Yep. And then we have, as soon as the YouTube video goes up, we link it. So you'll be able to see that before it okay. even airs on the, yep. the regular channel. Uh, real fast, we got about 10 seconds left. Website again. Let the it's, viewers know. Uh, nehabct.org. N e h a b c t dot org. And also the Facebook page. Uh, New England Human Animal Bond Foundation. All right. With that being said, Craig, it was yeah. an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having uh, us. It, it was. Thank it was. You, yeah. Thank you. Uh, you know, it, it's. Uh, we're, we're definitely going to have you back. We'll have you back in the spring. All right. Appreciate so, it. With that being said, want to thank the viewers for joining us this evening. Uh, uh, as always, we, we try to bring you top-notch uh, uh, shows, and we did that. We did that tonight. Uh, we hope this helped you. Uh, thanks for watching. See you next time on the Veterans Corner. Good night. Water's warm at Jaws Pond, and we're stocked full of treasures. Big or small, we buy it all. We buy and sell fast rides, power tools, vintage guitars, and so much more. Walk the plank in style with our fine jewelry, diamonds, and watches. Plus, we have a huge selection of the latest video games, including the new PlayStation 5 and Xbox Series X. Jaws Pond, conveniently located on Meriden Waterbury Turnpike in Southington and West Main Street in New Britain. I'm your host, Kurt Barwis. Today, I have a very special guest, Dr. Andrew Lynn. Hello, and welcome to another episode of the Veterans Corner. My name is Chuck Wooden. Decision for ourselves for this week if we want to be made well. Hi, welcome to the crack of dawn. It's Dawn Lombardi. I'm starting the painting. It's going to be the clips with some water. Love it. He took me on the sets of Lost in Space, Batman. Everybody has a story. What's yours? Until next time.